favorite hobbies is sewing. I usually sew garments inspired by rockabilly and clothes from the 40s to the 60s. Uh, I want my garments to have a close fit so it hugs your body and sits nicely on you. That could be hard to achieve uh, when you have to alter your patterns uh, to fit your body because when you try to do so and pin on yourself uh, you distort your shape. So I found that I, I wanted to have a body double so I could have my body beside of me so I, so I could pin on myself without me moving. So I decided to make a mannequin, a dress form. So I wanted to make a dress form with a bit of shoulder and legs so I would have a crotch on my dress form so I could also make pants. So there are a couple of different methods you could use to make your own mannequin. There is the duct tape form, the bootstrap pattern, the plaster and the cast methods that you could use either masking tape um, and make a masking tape cast or a plaster cast. And there are pros and cons with all these different methods. Um, if you use duct tape, uh, you could do this uh, in maybe one day's time and you need to be at least one extra person to be able to to wrap you in the duct tape so put on a t-shirt that you don't mind ruining pull duct tape around uh, cut it up uh, get out <laughs> um, tape it back together and fill it with newspaper when you're pinning it um, your pins uh, will get sticky because of the glue or they might get sticky uh, and since you stuffed it with newspaper the form will be really light which might distort the form and be hard to pin in because when you're trying to pin it it'll sink in so it could distort your form um, but it's a cheap and uh, fast method uh, to get a mannequin then we have the bootstrap uh, pattern and then you go to the bootstrap fashion website you put in your measurements there um, and then uh, you buy um, a pattern and then you sew your own mannequin that you stuff with polyester stuffing uh, they have many different measurements um, and it's not a super expensive way to make a form either uh, you only need to be one person when you're doing it uh, and you could use your sewing supplies that you already have at home so don't you don't need any specific tools or so just to your regular sewing stuff um, the shape could be distorted there as well if you stuff uh, your bootstrap pattern with a lot of stuffing that could make it bigger and also uh, there is a risk that you could distort it while you're sewing it together as well so the measurements might not match i think uh, you will be able to stick your pins uh, all in the bootstrap pattern but since the form is squishy it might uh, give after when you're trying to pin it as well then we have plaster you could do only a plaster cast on yourself take it off and then use that as a mannequin although you won't be able to pin into the cast the plaster cast since the plaster is solid um, then we have the two different methods where you make a cast either you do it with uh, masking tape or you do it with plaster and then you fill that form with expanding foam if you're doing the masking tape version 
Uh, it's similar to the duct tape that you might not get a super smooth surface since the, um, the tape might wiggle a bit when you're putting it on. Um, and if you use plaster instead, you will be able to get a smoother surface. And it's important that you have a smooth inner surface because it's the inner surface that's going to serve as the outer layer of your expanding foam later. So it's if you have a uneven uh, inner layer that will show on your expanding foam when you take the cast off. So try to get it as smooth as possible. Um, so plaster is a bit more expensive than masking tape. I decided to use plaster because you will be able to get a smoother surface and won't have to uh, like work so much with the surface afterwards and uh, when the expanding foam is expanding that might distort uh, the masking tape form since masking tape isn't as strong as plaster uh, and I also feel like you can get a, a model that's closer to your own measurements and is more stable uh, if you're using the plaster as your form. I decided to go with the making a plaster cast that you fill with expanding foam and I used polyurethane foam. So this is how I did it. Here are my supplies. A whiteboard with instructions, a fan, something to drink for the model, tightly fitting polyester outfit, Vaseline, this is 250 grams, which was too little. I needed 370 grams. Plaster. My original plan was to use the medical kind plaster, but unfortunately I bought too little, so I also bought crafting plaster. I didn't use all of this amount because this is 195 meters of plaster and I only used 105 meters of plaster and that is 35 rolls of plaster and the plaster was 10 centimeters wide. A difference between the medical plaster and the crafting plaster is that there is more plaster on the bandage strip on the medical plaster so I chose to use the medical plaster as my inner layers of my cast to get the smoothest surface possible. Nitrile gloves to protect your hands. I decided not to use plastic gloves because I've heard that plastic gloves could react with the expanding foam uh, or the plaster. I'm not sure, but just to be safe, I chose the nitrile gloves to prevent any chemical reaction. Measuring tape, scissors, one regular scissor and one bandage scissor for any emergency exit if that's necessary. Paper, pencils, flashlight, straps to tie around your finished cast uh, just for extra safety before you pour in your expanding foam. Buckets, you only need one with water to dip your plaster strips in. Plastic strips uh, to use in the seam between uh, the front and the back half of your cast to make sure that you can uh, pull front and back cast apart and get out of the cast. Folding measuring tape, masking tape and package tape and a towel and a piece of cardboard to seal the holes from the arms and the legs. And that's all of the equipment that you need for step one, which is uh, wrapping your model in plaster. For step two, drain pipes in PP plastic. I used three drain pipes that were one meter long and had a diameter of 30 millimeters. Connections to the drain pipes, uh, one T connection, and two 90 degrees connections. One tool to cut off your pipes, 50 centiliter cups to mix your expanding foam in, 
tongue depressors to mix your expanding foam. Your expanding foam. I use polyurethane foam. These are two kits, so each kit comes with two bottles, one part A and one part B, and each bottle weighs one kilo. In total, this is four kilos, and this was enough for me. I was left with maybe five centimeters left in, in two bottles. I'm a European size 36 to 38, I'm 168 centimeters long with a waist of 72 centimeters, hip of 97 centimeters and bust of about 82 centimeters. Uh, and this amount of uh, expanding polyurethane foam was enough for my body volume. We also used a drill and a piece of wood in step two. Uh, to make a stand for the doll so it could stand upright while we poured the uh, expanding foam inside of the doll. And we also used the hand saw there and this uh, sawing box to be able to saw this wood piece apart. And this piece of wood was 3 meter long, 4.5 centimeters high or deep, and 7 centimeters broad. So the cut edge of this wood piece was 7 centimeters broad and 4.5 centimeters high. We did not use these uh, wooden dowels in step 2, but we used them in step 3. We bought one wooden dowel that was 3 meters and we cut it in two to be able to take it home. And the dowel was 27 millimeters in diameter to be able to slide inside the plastic pipe. So that's everything for step two. When you pour your expanding foam inside of your plaster cast. Here are the different tools we used in the workshop. I'll say them in Swedish and in English. Slitmaskin. Sander. En syl som egentligen inte var så jag tog min kniv istället. Nej. Eh, multiverktyg. En för slipning och en för sågning av gipset. Multitool for sanding and sawing. Eh, stämjärn. Chinsel. Figursåg, den var jättebra att såga i skummet med. Coping saw, tong, plier, gummiklubba, rubber mallet, formaskin, formaskin. cordless drill, sax, scissor, vinkelhake, L square, sandpapper, nummer 80 tror jag. Sandpaper number 80. Fogsvans. Yeah. Hand saw. Fogsvans. Twingar. Clamps. Sax. Scissor. Såglåda. Sawbox. Såglåda. Och träling. And wood glue. Jag tror att det var allt. That was every tool. Som vi använde. We used in the workshop. For phase four, that is wrapping your mannequin in fabric, I used polyester stuffing. A stretch fabric that was 130 centimeters broad and about 140 centimeters long. I used some kind of trico with about 75% stretch that I had at home. A stretch needle so you won't get skipped stitches. Polyester thread. Elastic, which I ended up not using. Paper. Scissor. A pants pattern. A nice cotton fabric that was 35 centimeters wide and 15 centimeters long. I ended up using another one that the one I'm showing here. A stand for your pin cushion that we made in the workshop from around a rounded dowel and a scrap wood piece. Start the project with inviting your relatives and friends to help you. Put on your tight polyester outfit. Take your measurements so you will be able to check if the measurements on your finished dress form matches your own measurements later in the process. The measurements we took were bust, waist, underbust, overbust, 
tummy, hip, thigh and neck. For each measurement we took the front to side seam, back to side seam and the total measurement around. We did this to make it easier to compare the measurement on the foam dress form to your measurements. So if we discovered that the waist on the dress form was too big, we could check if it was front waist or back waist that differed, or if the distortion was evenly distributed. While we took my measurements, the other participants started to cut the bandage strips in different sizes in the lengths 30 centimeters and 15 centimeters. Cover your polyester outfit in Vaseline. The Vaseline serves as a release so you will be able to get the plaster off your body. One could also use plastic wrap as a release but I decided to use Vaseline since I had a feeling that the plastic wrap would incorporate tiny wrinkles in the plaster surface and maybe get stuck in the plaster. And you still need to spread Vaseline inside your front and back halves of your cast before you pour your expanding foam inside of your cast. So you already need the Vaseline. You can't get Vaseline out of your clothes. I tried putting them in the washing machine and it did not get the Vaseline out. So I had to throw them away. So if you would like to keep the clothes you're wearing, I would use plastic wrap instead of Vaseline. Make sure to cover all the parts you will have plaster on with Vaseline, including your neck. And make sure to get as few wrinkles on your clothes as possible before you put on the plaster. Zip the plaster in water with 20 to 25 degrees Celsius in 30 seconds. Drag the bandage strip between your fingers to squeeze out any excess water. Place the plaster bandage on your model and stroke it smooth. Since the medical plaster gets a nice creamy consistency, it's easier to model and get a smooth surface. That's why we used medical plaster as the inner layers. Stand with straight legs to be sure that you keep the same position during the plastering. There is a risk you might faint, so make sure to move your toes every now and then. I can imagine that the risk of fainting is bigger if you use plastic wrap as your release instead of Vaseline since the plastic wrap does not breed and you might get overheated. Just be prepared and keep something to drink nearby and make sure you have eaten before you start putting the plaster on. A fan could also come in handy if it's hot in the room where you are. We did not use my fan since I was freezing inside of the cast. Stroke Vaseline on the edge of the front cast. Cut plastic strips to place in the seam between the front and the back halves. The plastic strips should be placed on your shoulders, down your sides and between your thighs. Place the plastic strip on the Vaseline edge. Use masking tape if it's hard to get the plastic to lay still. And put Vaseline on the top of the plastic strip. So the layers will be you, your t-shirt, the front plaster, Vaseline, the plastic strip and Vaseline. Continue with putting medical plaster on the back half of your body. I think we did three to five layers of plaster bandage on my body in different directions. I think we ended up with four layers on the front and three layers on the back halves. Make sure not to use all of your plaster in this step because you also need plaster to seal the front and back halves together and to seal the leg holes and the arm holes later. Maybe save three rolls of plaster for that. The plaster binds within three and a half minutes and is dry enough to move the patient in 30 minutes. The plaster is completely dry and has its full strength after 24 hours. Keep the plaster on for 30 minutes and then pull on the plastic strips to get the front and the back halves to separate from each other. The plaster stuck a bit on my clothes even though we used Vaseline, so when we took the plaster off we had to slide our hands in between the plaster and the fabric to loosen it from the plaster. But it went well and I got out and did not faint. Build a skeleton structure inside your mannequin for extra stability and to be able to have the finished mannequin sitting on the stand that you will build later so the mannequin will be able to stand on the floor. Start by building the hip bone by cutting your plastic pipe into short pieces 
and push them into your connections. Put the T connection in the middle and the 90 degree connections on each side. Put another pipe in your T connection to serve as a spine. Keep the spine too long since it will make it easier to handle when pouring in your expanding foam in your cast later. Lay your skeleton in one of your cast halves to measure how high up you want your hip bone to be and how long you want your leg pieces to be. Make the leg pieces long enough so that they will stick out of the legs on the cast and push the pipes into your 90 degrees connections. Lay front and back halves of the cast together. Check that the pipes sticks out of the legs and fix the leg lengths on the cast so that they will be even and have a straight edge. If it's hard to cut the plaster with your scissor, you could use a utility knife. Put on gloves and stroke one layer of Vaseline inside of your two cast halves. The Vaseline serves as a release, so you will be able to get the cast off your expanding foam later. Make sure to stroke the Vaseline all the way up to the edges of the cast. Shine with the flashlight to check that you did not miss any spots. Place your skeleton in one of your cast halves. If you don't do that in this step, you won't be able to get your skeleton inside your cast later. Put your front and back halves together and seal the seams with plaster bandages. I think I had four to six layers of bandage for each seam. Cover the seams on the shoulders, down the sides and between the thighs. Cut cardboard pieces to seal the arm and the leg holes. Keep your neck opening open so you will be able to pour your expanding foam in later. Put Vaseline on the plastic pipes sticking out of the leg cardboard pieces. Cover all of the cardboard pieces, legs and arms, with plaster that you stroke up the sides on your legs and arms. Put plaster in different directions to make it stable. I used approximately 10 layers of bandage on the leg cardboard pieces to make sure that it could take the whole weight of the expanding foam. Put paper underneath the form to prevent it from losing its shape while it dries overnight. And that's day one. Now, day two. After the cast had dried overnight, we discovered a problem. When we raised the doll to make it stand upright, the pipes slid inside of the cast. So we solved that by drilling two deep holes in an extra wood piece for the pipes so the doll could stand upright without the pipes disappearing into the cast. Before we started to fill the form with polyurethane foam, we wrapped the cast with paper and put straps around it, just to be sure that the expanding foam wouldn't push the front and the back half of the cast apart. The paper served as protection for the straps so they wouldn't get plastery or foamy. Remember that the inside of the cast is covered with Vaseline, so you will get sticky if you touch the inside. Start with reading on your polyurethane foam bottle to see if you need any specific safety equipment and if you need to be in any specific area, either in a well-ventilated room or outside. Our recommendations was to be in a well-ventilated area and have safety goggles. We didn't actually use the safety goggles, but you should, to protect your eyes. Always wear your nitrile gloves to protect your hands from the polyfoam. If you get the polyfoam on your skin, wash it immediately. We used a two-part solid polyurethane foam that forms a hard and dense foam with a density of 33 grams per liter. Part A is a resin that you pour into the catalyst, part B. For us, the resin, part A, had the light color and was a bit thinner than the catalyst, part B, that had the dark color and was a bit thicker in consistency. The amount of polyurethane foam we used was two kits of one kilo, with approximately 1.7 liter fluid per bottle. In every kit 
you get 1 kilo of part A and 1 kilo of part B. So we used 4 bottles in total, 2 kilo of A and 2 kilo of B. And we got approximately a quarter of one bottle left when we were finished. So the 4 kilos for the dress form volume was enough. The polyfoam expands between 10 and 15 times its original volume and generates a strong pressure. So your form must be stable and have an open way for excess material. Our opening was the throat, where we also poured in our polyurethane foam. Make sure you have put protective plastic on your floor to protect it before you start mixing and pouring your foam. Plastic is recommended since the foam could wet through your paper if you use paper to cover your floor. Have a friend to help you with this step to hold and tilt the doll. Prepare two 50 centiliter paper cups, one for part A and one for part B. Pour equal parts of part A and part B in the two different cups. I poured approximately five centimeters of part A in one cup and five centimeters of part B in the other. Pour part A, the resin, into part B, the catalyst, and stir lively with a tongue depressor. The polyfoam starts expanding after 40 to 50 seconds and stops after 2 minutes. Stir in 15 to 30 seconds until you get a uniform cream color without any swirls and pour the polyfoam inside of your cast. We pour the polyfoam in, in small batches, we used the same cups more than one time and wasn't super strict about which part to pour in which. Actually, there were no instructions for us to pour part A in part B, but some expanding foams might have instructions about that. So read on your bottles. Our original plan was to pour the polyfoam down the sides on the inside of the cast, pick the cast up and tilt it around so the sides would get covered with foam, so that the foam then should start expanding inwards towards the middle. We weren't able to lift the doll and flip it around because of the weight, and because the bottom wood piece probably would have fallen off if we had lifted the doll. It was also hard to pour the polyfoam down the sides, but we did our best to try to pour it down the sides and to tilt the cast around to make sure that we got the foam into both of the legs, for starters. We fill the cast in about 10 to 11 pourings. Temperature affects the expansion. Avoid lower temperature than 20 degrees Celsius on your fluids and in the room where you're working. The foam rises to the same volume independent of the heat, but the reaction goes faster the warmer it is in the room. The chemical reaction also generates heat up to 55 to 66 degrees Celsius. I was worried that the heat might affect the plastic pipes, but it didn't since the pipes could stand up to 90 degrees Celsius momentarily. The foam hardens quickly and you could take your cast off after 30 minutes if you had worked in a room with a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. If the temperature in the room was 25 degrees or higher, you could take the cast off after 7 to 20 minutes, but we let the polyfoam harden in the cast overnight. I've heard that the polyfoam could evaporate fumes that isn't great to breathe in, up till 24 hours after it has hardened, so you might not want to keep your cast in your bedroom the first night. But that might depend on which type of foam you're using. But I kept my form in the hallway and shut the door to my bedroom the first night, just for extra safety. And then the dress form has been standing in my bedroom ever since. So filling the cast with polyurethane foam was day number two. Now, day three. Now it's time to take the plaster cast off your foam mannequin. Start with taking off the straps and the paper. Cut around your bottom leg pieces with a cutting multi-tool. Continue with the arm bottom pieces. 
The plaster pieces you're cutting off is where you put your cardboard pieces earlier. Be careful so you won't get any cuts in your foam, or yourself, of course. Tear the plaster off. It will get messy, so you might want to have a vacuum cleaner nearby. The Vaseline that you put on earlier as a release is still sticky, so a roll of paper might come in handy as well. When you've gotten your cast off, check the measurements of the doll and compare them to your own to see if any specific parts needs to be sanded down. Put an elastic around the waist to make it easier to see exactly where the waist is. Check all of your measurements. For example, I discovered that the crotch got too low on my mannequin because of the bulkiness of the clothes I was wearing when we did the plaster cast. So we sawed a bit of the excess foam off with a coping saw and sanded the foam down to a closer measurement. Off camera, we also pushed the two rounded dowels into the leg pipes and put the doll on the floor beside me to check that the dowels were the right length so the doll had the same height as me. While I continued to sand the surface of the doll to get the right measurements and smooth surface, my dad started to build the construction that would make the mannequin able to stand on the floor. He took two 50 cm long 45 by 70 mm pieces of wood, made markings suiting the measurements of the width, that was 70 mm, and half of the height of the wood pieces, that was 22.5 mm, and took the marked area out using a rubber mallet and a chin sole. He made cuts where the dotted lines are as well to make it easier to take the area out with the chin sole. Then we sanded the surface on the wood pieces with a sander. We drilled two holes in the top piece for the wooden dowels to slide into to make it possible for the mannequin to stand on the floor. We glued the middle of the wood cross together and fastened it with two screws as well. It's really important that you don't put the glue in the big holes you drilled since if you glue the wooden dowels to the cross you won't be able to put pants on your doll later. When my dad made the wooden cross I adjusted the length of the arms so that they would be even. I drew a line with a marker and cut on the line with a coping saw. We also did a base to a pin cushion from a wooden dowel and a scrap piece of wood. I sawed off a 10 cm long wooden dowel and my dad took the scrap piece of wood, sawed a round shape for the base, drilled a hole in the base and glued the wooden dowel into the base. We finished today in the workshop by vacuuming off the doll since the sanding covered the mannequin in lots of little grains of foam. And that's day three. Before you cover your mannequin in fabric, see if you have gotten any air bubble holes in your foam. If you notice any holes, stuff them with polyester stuffing. I also put stuffing at the ends of the legs to fill the big holes I got there. When all holes are filled, you can start with the covering. When I first put my stretch treacle fabric on the doll, I didn't like how the fabric draped at the crotch. I realized that I would have to make a crotch seam to make the cover look good. So I decided to use a pattern from a pair of pants I made earlier. I prolonged the crotch curve so that it extended up to the neck and made a pattern for the cover. If you don't have a pants pattern at home, you could take a pair of regular pants that you like Copy the crotch curve from them and prolong in the curve to make your pattern. Make a pattern for the bottom pieces for the legs and neck by drawing around a wooden dowel on a piece of paper. Cut the circle out. Place the paper at the end pieces of the legs around the wooden dowels and around the plastic pipe at the neck. Mark around the legs and neck on your paper to make the pattern pieces for the ends.
cut your pieces out in your fabric and make sure to add seam allowance on the inside of your inner circle and stretch it a little bit when you drag them over the towels or the plastic pipe. Put front halves right sides together and sew the crotch seam. Do the same thing for the back. I used a stretch needle and a small zigzag stitch for the seam in the treacle. Stretch the front piece around your doll and try to avoid any wrinkles. Pin in place. Put your pins where you want your side seam to be. I also made bust darts to make the fabric sit nicer around the bust. Now it's time to mark your shoulder seam and side seam. Instead of drawing the seam with a pencil, I decided to base the seam line to avoid pencil marks on the white fabric. To make the side seam as straight as possible, I made a plumb by tying a string in my fabric scissor and letting it hang, so that the string served as a straight line. Then I tried to follow the string while basting my side seam with a red thread on my fabric. After basting the side seams, shoulder seams and neck seam, on the left and right side on the front, cut off the excess fabric but leave 1.5 cm to serve as seam allowance. The first step in putting the back fabric on the mannequin is to baste the inseam of the front and back halves together. The inseam is the seam between your thighs. Stretch the back fabric around your doll, pin in place and repeat the steps for the side seams, which are Base the side seams, shoulder seams and neck seam. Leave 1.5 cm fabric for your seam allowance and cut the excess off. Make markings to serve as notches in the seam allowance on 8 to 10 places on the side seam. The notches will help you later when it's time to sew your side seams together on your sewing machine. Also make notches on the leg end pieces. Take the fabric off the mannequin. Sew the bust darts and pin the front, back and leg pieces together, matching your notches. Use a small zigzag stitch when you're sewing the pieces together. Sew the side seams up to the shoulder, leaving the shoulder seam open. If you also sew the shoulder seams together, you won't be able to get the cover on your mannequin later. Take the mannequin off the stand and dress it with your cover. Pin the open shoulder seam shut by folding in the seam allowance. Pin in place and sew the seam shut by hand. I put my stitches inside the pleat so they wouldn't show on the right side. This is how I made my stitches. Start with making a knot on your thread. Make a front stitch inside of the pleat so it won't show on the right side of the fabric. Push the needle down in the under layer and make a back stitch in the under layer. Push the needle back up into the pleat in the upper layer. Then repeat these steps. Front stitch in the pleat, down into the under layer, back stitch and come back up into the pleat. Repeat these steps. I discovered that it's a lot easier to sew this if you have a bent needle. Drag the top end piece over the plastic pipe. Make sure that the fabric extends up to where the pipe ends. Put an elastic at the base of the pipe to keep the fabric end from sliding down from the pipe. Turn in the seam allowance. Pin and sew the seam by hand. Here I use regular running stitches, which are called försting in Swedish. This last part is optional but I decided to make a pin cushion to make use of the plastic pipe sticking up from the neck. I decided to make a round pin cushion. Start with measuring the diameter of the wooden pin cushion base you made earlier in the workshop. 
my base was 6 cm in diameter. Fold a piece of paper in half and draw a straight line that is half the length of the diameter. That was 3 cm for my pincushion. Draw a desired rounded elliptic pie piece shape and add 5 mm seam allowance on all sides. Cut out four pieces in your desired fabric. Put the right sides together and pin and sew the seams. I used a serger stitch on my sewing machine to sew the seams. I also serged the lower edges so they wouldn't fray. If you don't have a serger stitch on your sewing machine, you can sew the seams with a straight stitch and zigzag the lower edges. Take a strong thread and tie a knot in the end. The thread I used was a buttonhole silk thread. It's important that the thread is strong so you won't break it when you're pulling it later. Sew long basting stitches near the edge. Stuff your cushion with polyester stuffing. Place your wooden pin cushion base inside your pin cushion and pull on your thread to gather the fabric around the wooden dowel under the base. Sew the cushion in place and secure your stitches. And that's day 4 and 5. A la Kazam! Here is the finished mannequin. I think the shape and the curves of the mannequin matches my own quite well. The butt got a bit too small, uh, but all the other measurements was almost exactly the same as mine. I don't think I could have gotten a more similar shaped mannequin in any other way. Although I discovered a huge con with this type of mannequin. Approximately one month after the mannequin was finished, the polyfoam started to cave in a lot in different places and distorting the shape. Now it's been almost three months since it was finished and the shape is still changing. It has caved in at the hip, the waist and the left bust area. I don't know why this is happening, but it seems that the polyfoam incorporated air bubbles when it expanded, even though we tilted the plaster cast around a lot to try to prevent that. And somehow the outer layer must have either melted or gotten weak somehow and started to cave in, revealing all the air pockets and distorting the mannequin's shape, which is really sad. But I guess you could save it by either adding more polyfoam and sanding it down again or pad the mannequin like you would to change the shape of a regular dress form. But everything else went well in the process. I was really happy about that the work we put into making this actually turned out pretty well. And I really like the detachable pin cushion feature. That really comes in handy when you're pinning garments on your mannequin. And it matches the waistband I made as well. And the fabric actually comes from one of my grandmother's old skirts that I love. So overall it took us five days, four persons, uh, at least when you're putting the plaster on. Uh, five whole days of work and it costed me uh, 2,780 Swedish crowns and that's about uh, $270. Um, I feel like it's worth it because uh, this mannequin will be as close to my own body measurements as possible. So if I uh, decided to make this again I would uh, make sure to uh, not push uh, the halves, the front and the back half of the cast uh, too far together because that will decrease your butt measurement, for example. Um, and then I would also make detachable shoulders by uh, cutting off your arm, drilling a hole 
at a 45 degree angle um, and then take a wooden piece let's imagine like this is wood uh, a square wood piece uh, cover it with masking tape put vaseline on there put some kind of uh, clay in the hole push it in uh, and the vaseline and the masking tape will serve as a release so you will get this out later after i've done that i would take the shoulder piece drill a hole in there as well push the wood piece in and fill uh, fill it uh, like fill around the hole with polyfoam so then you would have a detachable shoulder on your dress form the reason i use a square wood piece and not a, a rounded wooden dowel is like if you have a maybe a longer arm um, and you have a rounded joint the arm might swing so if you have a square joint instead it will prevent the arm from swinging so it's a functional dress form you could push pins all the way in if you like uh, and the measurements are really similar to my own body measurements so I'm happy with the results and I hope you will be too if you try this method. So good luck and take care. Bye.